the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing that all was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. And when Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. And since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And he said, I'm not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing around it and warming themselves and Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I have said to them. They know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, 
summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, here is the man. When the chief priest and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and set him on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. And then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. And this was to fulfill 
what the scripture says, they divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Copus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Jesus to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. The soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to take him away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. It is finished. That along with, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, <clears throat> were the last two of Jesus' final seven sayings on the cross. The former, of course, is from John's reading today, and the latter is from Luke. There's a tendency to interpret it is finished as a reference to the fact that Jesus was ending his mortal life. In reality, it's much more than this. The word used in the original Greek text of John is tetelestai, which more accurately means accomplished. It is accomplished. Jesus is saying that he has accomplished the purpose for which he came to the world. There's nothing left for him to do as a living mortal. There's a popular English expression, it couldn't see the forest for the trees. Uh, it refers to the details, the focusing on the details of something and then overlooking the big picture. And I, I think that sometimes occurs 
with the accounts of Jesus' ministry on earth. We get snapshots of it every week, events, miracles, parables, and his interaction with other people. These can often seem to be random, unrelated happenings. It's easy to overlook the orderly unfolding of Jesus' ministry. This was not an aimless wandering by Jesus and his disciples. It was a systematic progression of events that led to the completion of the purpose for which Jesus was born. Think about it. Jesus' ministry began with his baptism and the pronouncement by God that Jesus was his son. Jesus was then tested in the wilderness. He returned to Galilee and began preaching, teaching, and healing. He picked the 12 apostles who would create his church. The apostles were then set out, set out in pairs on somewhat of an orientation mission. Then upon their return, Jesus is transfigured on a mountain in the presence of Peter, James, and John. And I like to compare this, as I've said in an earlier sermon, to an ordination ceremony wherein Jesus is formally ordained by God. And God tells those present, listen to him. Jesus then covers a lot of ground and meets a wide variety of people who recognize him as the Messiah and spread the word. A Samaritan woman, a Syrophoenician woman, Gentiles on the other side of the uh, Galilean lake that raised pigs, a blind man who was blind from birth, Jairus, a synagogue leader. Jesus starts with his Galilean ministry, and then he continues with his Judean ministry. And eventually, he reaches the people at the center of the Jewish religious universe, the people of Jerusalem. Throughout all of this, the message that Jesus brings becomes clearer and more focused. And then he concludes with the Last Supper, giving us the holy sacraments of bread and wine. The only thing left was for Jesus to fulfill the ancient Jewish prophecies by his crucifixion and resurrection. And Jesus accomplished all of this in only three years. I was re recently reading about famous people who spent a lifetime in work that was never completely accomplished. For all that he created, Michelangelo left more works unfinished than he completed. Franklin, Franklin Roosevelt died with the nation still at war. The last words of Cecil Rhodes, whose name was known throughout the African continent, were, so much to do, so little done. And this describes so many lives, but not Jesus. Today, we memorialize the fulfillment of Jesus' earthly mission, but we also look forward to the beginning of his heavenly mission that followed the resurrection, the ascension, and the arrival of the Holy Spirit, the gift of forgiveness and eternal life, the blessings of grace and peace. Jesus' presence with us was not finished on the cross. It was just beginning. Amen. Amen.